we measure from the ah! God. So keeps wobbling, but stopping it and comparing it to the ruler, it looks to be 34 centimeters. Hello everybody, my name is Abuna Ice Bear from Mary Shine Trap, and it's Happy Black History Month, and as you can see, now I've actually created a website. So www, although everyone has the www, so we'll just skip it, blackscientist.tech. Make sure to check this little cool guy out. All right, so now let's begin. You might see we have a special setup here. So let me get on the other side of this. If you can't tell what this red thing is, it's a spring. As you can see, when I pull it, it will oscillate. No, 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 little baby, go back. And what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to measure the resting length of the spring. So uh, I seem to be holding it the wrong way. So, the resting length of this ring, we got to start from the top of this ring and end at the bottom of this ring. So, let's see the resting length, and it is about 30 centimeters. Perfectly good. Okay, so let me just keep this on me. So, we can call X initial over here 30 centimeters, but we're going to work in meters here. And converting from 30 centimeters to meters, just as simple as dividing by 100. Okay, so now, while well, X final, we'll see about that. Now here, as you can see, let me put these hot guys back in my pocket. As you can see, on the top of this stand here, we've got quite a few masses. First of all, we've got this 100 gram mass, and you can trust me because it says 100 gm. No, it should only say 100 g. We've got two other 100 gram masses, and then we've got two 50 gram masses, and you can uh, know they're 50 gram masses because they're slightly small. So now we can stack them up, like we can put this one onto the hook, it's back down, and we know that our X final is 0.32 meters or 32 centimeters. So now we can put this over here because this is stop. This is our X final 0.32 meters. This is our X initial 0.3 meters. And just for uh, sake of measurement, we can put 100 grams over here. All right. So now you can see that our delta X is just going to be 0.02 meters. This is some basic subtraction right there. So now let's write down what we have in our beautiful table. So we have the mass in grams to be 100. We have the mass in kilograms, someone forgot a parenthesis, to be 0.1 because we got to divide by 1,000 for kilograms. Uh, force in newtons. Uh, Fg is just going to be m times g. We're going to assume g is 10 meters per second squared. So 0.1 times 10 is just going to be 1 newton. So basically, we just got to move the decimal place over by 1. And then, or delta x, as we saw, was 0.02 meters. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add one of these 50 gram masses. We have two of them for reference, and they're smaller than the 100 gram ones. And I'm going to take it on this hook and just spin it around, and boom. Now this is 150 grams because it's 100 grams as we saw before plus this 50 gram mass. All right, so now let's put this nice fella back onto the spring. And in the meanwhile, we know that we have 150 grams, 0.15 kilograms. Multiplying that by 10 is 1.5 newtons. Now we're going to measure our delta x. And let's put 150 grams over here. So let's take our trusty meter stick and measure from the ring. Oh, stop wobbling, you stupid. Okay. We measure from the ring. Ah! God. So keeps wobbling. But stopping it and comparing it to the ruler, it looks to be 34 centimeters. So 34 centimeters is what I'm going to accept. 
So this is 0.34 meters, 34 centimeters. So we have 0.34 meters minus 0.3 meters. So delta x is pretty simple, just 0.04 meters. Now let's write that over here and get ready for what we're going to do next. Squeeze the Majabra off the spring and add another 50 gram mass onto it. Uh, and it goes, nope, wrong way. So in it go, oh dear God, man. Over here and now we have 200 grams. 100 plus 50 plus 50. So now, shut up. Calm down, you stupid thing. Now, we're going to just add this guy to the sp uh, spring. And you can see it's stretched even more. Now you can kind of actually see through the spring because the little spring lines are stretched out that much. So now, how much does this stretch the spring? Well, obviously you could say more, but more is not exact. But first, let's record all the mass. Dear God mass and stuff we know this is 200 grams and uh, we gotta write the point three here again this is 200 grams which is 0.2 kilograms which is gonna be 0.2 times 10 is 2 newtons now let's measure uh, the length uh, of the spring from its equilibrium how far has it been disturbed? And there's a piece of tape over here, but I shouldn't be getting distracted with that. Don't get distracted when you're doing quality physics. And it looks like we've got 36. I don't know if you can see that, but as you can see here, we've got a little bit over 36. So let's just round that to 36 centimeters or 0.36 meters. So 0.36 meters is going to leave us with a delta X of 0.06. So now we have a 0.06 as our delta X. And now let's clear everything over here out because do you know what we're going to do now? Well, we've already, let me take this off. We've already added all the 50 gram masses. So now the next logical step to take is to add the 100 gram masses. So let's erase all of this stuff. And now we should be good to go. So what I'm going to do is now, I'm just going to take this looper and, oh uh, no, that way and just wobble wobble it over here. And now we've got 100 plus 100 plus 50 plus 50 is 300 grams. It's starting to get a little heavy. I know, I know, we're putting you through a lot of trials, but don't get tired. Okay, and here we go. Oh wow, oh wow, it's elongating a lot. Let's let it calm down for a little bit before we actually measure it. Now I'm going to artificially calm it down by grasping it. That kind of sounds bad. And let's hold the ruler over here so it doesn't like bump the mass and skew our measurement. And over here, oh wow, it's jumped by a little bit. It's about 40 centimeters. So, Oh, I forgot to record all the mass and stuff because I was just that excited. 0.33 newtons. And, uh, well, we got to calculate the delta X first. We know it was 0.4 meters or 40 centimeters. Uh, this was 300 grams. So now let's do it. This is very obviously 0.1 meter. So this is 0.1 and the story is coming close to an end. So now I have adjusted all these little holes just so it's satisfying factor. And now we're going to add a new 100 gram thing. So that's going to make the total mass. Well, we are going to find out, but you probably already know that if you're 
watching a physics video, then you probably already know how to do basic addition. And here we have 100 plus 100 plus 100 plus 50 plus 50 is 400 grams. Now this is a real, a real shocker. So let's just put this back here for a second and write that down. 400.4, four newtons, and we don't know the displacement yet. Let's erase all this. Let's erase this. Actually, we know it's gonna be 400 grams. And now, let's place this on our, not scale, our spring. And let's take this guy and put him back where he was supposed to go. Okay. So, we have 400 grams, all of the masses combined, Three, two, one, stop. Stop it, get some help. Three, two, one, go. Oh, wow. That is a lot of elongation. You can see, now it has a visible like oscillation in the y-axis, so let's let it oscillate because we don't want the results to like be messed up because it was wobbling. So in the meantime, I'm going to set up my ruler in the right position. Stop oscillating. I don't want you to oscillate. We just had a marker casualty. But uh measuring it, it looks like it's starting to settle around 44. I don't know if you can see that, but the end of the spring right over here is at 44 0.44 meters and now subtracting that from 0.3 it's 0.14 meters and we can put that in the table wow so now that we're done with this oscillating spring and all of its hobber majobbery we can test out Hooke's law god damn it the law that force is equal to spring constant, basically how stiff or strong the spring is, times the displacement. Now, if the spring was in equilibrium, and we measured the length of the spring in equilibrium, so if the spring was in equilibrium, then this restoring force would be the same as the force of gravity that was being exerted on it. So, hypothetically, uh, that means that as force increases, then delta x will increase as well. And we can see it's done that, but what about at a constant rate? That's exactly what we're going to test. Is it increasing at a constant rate? If not, we're throwing Hooke's Law into the trash. Okay, so here's our increment. We're gonna increment it every two grid spaces here. The increment here is already done. So, ding dong, ding dong. And you might say, why delta x here and f here? Shouldn't it be the other way? Because x is not the independent variable while f is? Well, actually, we're going to be measuring k, and k is f over delta x, as uh, <coughs> discovered if you just do some simple algebraic manipulation of Hooke's Law. So, um, I want f to be the y and delta x to be the x, so that the slope of this line is simply just going to be k. All right. Okay. Huh. K. So we're going to make every two squares 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, and so on. So just give me a second. 0 0 0.06, 0 0.07, 0 0.08, 0 0.09, 0 0.1, 0.11, 0.12, 0 0.1. 0.13 and 0.14. All right. And now, what about the F? Well, 0.5 newtons, uh, 1 newton, 1.5 newtons, 2 newtons, 2.5 newtons, 3 newtons, 3.5 newtons, and 4 newtons. All right. So now, let's get started. So, first of all, we have the point, 0.02, 1. 
so 0.02 comma 1 is going to be right over here and then we have our next point 0.04 comma 1.5 so 0.04 comma 1.5 and obviously we have the 0, 0, 0.2 and then we have 0.6 comma 2 Point six comma two. This is two. Then we have point one comma three. So we have point one comma three is up here, I believe. Yup. Point one comma three, and point one four comma four. Finally, so we have point one four uh, comma four. That's the corner. So now, the thing about best fit lines is they're not meant to be like a connect the dot puzzle, but if you can get all of the data points with 100% confidence onto one uniform line, then that means that there's a linear, there's a linear correlation there. And by all means, you can just do it. So let's try drawing a best fit line where all the points fall on it. Uh, okay. Well, not. Uh, there's still one outlier point, but for the most part, this is our best fit line. Oh, whoa. So now you can see this one is slightly above what the best fit line expects, but it's good enough because it has all four of the other points. Alright, so now let's take two points that are not our data points from this best fit line and then try to find the slope between them so we can find the slope of our best fit line. So here we have a pretty cool point, point one one comma three. Wait, wait, what? Sorry. Point one one comma what? Three point two five? Okay. Point one one comma three point two five. And now uh what else are we going to do? Well let's try and find another point and bingo. We have point oh six comma two. 0.06 comma 2. Slope formula, hopefully we know it anyways. We have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And if you forgot, 2 refers to the point over here, while 1 refers to the point over here. And it all depends on where it is on the x-axis. So we have y2, which is 3.25, minus y1, 2, over x2, 0.11, minus x1, uh, 0.06, which gives us 1.25 over 0.05, or 1.25 times 20. And now, we can probably do our, uh, that math in our heads, right? Well, that's 20 plus 5, or 25. That means the spring constant of this spring is 25 Newton meters. Look at this dude. So we know this is 25 Newton meters. So now that's it. Thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you in this oscillating spring next time.